What's up, fellas? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm bringing you Stanford. They start the year off number three in our simulation. Can they finish in the top ten or possibly win a championship? Let's find out. Just for fun, let's check out the first game on the schedule. Stanford, number three, takes on Northwestern. Kirk is rocking with Stanford. A's overall A, A-plus offense, A-minus defense. Northwestern, B straight across. Don't stand a chance. I think Stanford's going to kick their butt. All right, Stanford, let's see what you got this year. You got plenty of opportunities for some very good teams. Let's check out the rest of the schedule. We've got Northwestern, UCF, Washington, Washington State, Utah, ranked Utah number 25, Oregon State, ASU, which is Arizona State, Notre Dame, number 11, Oregon, UCLA, USC, and as always, ending the season with Cal. Wow, that's quite the schedule there. Stanford, you know, the only two ranked teams to start the year, but Notre Dame's always tough. USC's always tough. Let's check out what happens in the rest of the simulation. They get a killer team for their recruiting class. Number 81 overall. Wow. But we're over. We're, we're here to tell you Tony Jackson, I guess, because they got locked out of the bottom two recruits. Tony Jackson, 65 overall, free safety. Good luck. On seeing the field, my man, but an 81 overall wide receiver in Gillett, that's quite the catch there, Stanford. They rushed for over 2,000 yards, finalists for a bunch of awards, got a school record 86 receptions in a year, only won three consecutive games twice, I guess, but oof. Let's check out the season results here. Northwestern, they beat them 35 to 14. They lose but to UCF and Washington. Both teams end up ranked, though. They beat Washington State, beat Utah, rank Utah, beat Oregon State, lose to Arizona State, who only goes 5-7, and seven, and then they beat Notre Dame, who's 10-2 at number 4 in overtime, beat Oregon, beat UCLA, lose to USC, and beat Cal. So some kind of confusing losses there. How do you lose to Arizona State? You kind of understand losing to ranked teams like USC, UCF, and Washington. I kind of thought they beat UCF. But, wow. Georgia ends the year ranked number one going into conference championship. Unanimous number one, 12-0. Arizona, Alabama, Notre Dame, and LSU round out the top five. All teams looking pretty good. Washington, Ohio State, Texas A&M, Florida, and Texas. Wow. Texas A&M and Florida both with single-digit wins rounding out the top ten. Kind of see some usual suspects there. Michigan, Navy, Colorado, Ole Miss, Clemson. There's Stanford, 8-4. You got UCF, USC, Miami, Arkansas, SMU, Utah, Iowa. Some of the usual, you know, suspects. There really no one that shocking. But Stanford does not end up the year with anyone in the Heisman race. Taylor from Arizona leading the charge. I wonder if he can hold off Swift going into the last year. A lot of the times you'll see the second place guy overtake the first guy in the conference championship week. We got Swift, Crockett, Akers, and Tate there. Taylor takes home the Heisman, beating out his QB, Khalil Tate, for it in a runaway Heisman vote. Look at those first place votes. Basically no one getting any other first place votes. 1,300 yards on the ground, 22 touchdowns, 44 receptions for 652 yards receiving and 5 touchdowns. This guy's a freaking beast. Taylor, dang, bro. Stanford ends the year 8-4, number 15, playing Duke in the Sun Bowl. El Paso, here we come. Stanford, I have a feeling they'll win this one. Duke 8-5. Pretty good, but Stanford better than them in almost every single category. Kirk is also rocking with the Cardinals. Stanford, I think you're going to pull one out here. Duke always challenging in the postseason, but Stanford, of course, having the talent edge, having the statistical edge, you got to think that Stanford's going to pull it out. That Duke defense is atrocious. Number 94 overall. Oof. 
Arizona ends conference championship week number one, 12 and one, beating number 11 Washington. Georgia loses to LSU. LSU jumps up to number two and is going to play for that national championship. Alabama, Notre Dame, I'm sorry, you're on the outside looking in. These two 12 and one teams, they're taking it to the streets. Georgia falls all the way to number five. Ouch, only scoring six points. That's pretty rough. But I think Arizona's got a really good chance here playing out in the Pac-12. Arcega Whiteside, his name is too long. Arcega Whiteside, 91 receptions this year. You just, you can't even hardly quantify that. Beating out a record that stood for 20 years. Congrats to you, my man. Stanford wins the bowl game against Duke, the Sun Bowl. They go up 14, oh, it's 14 to 14 at halftime. They come out and they're actually losing in the third quarter, but they end the game on a 14 to zero run. Stanford pulls it out. Wow, lots of first downs for Stanford, lots of yards. Getting it done on the ground, 275 yards on the ground. Duke, 130, that's pitiful. Stanford, keeping up with Duke through the air, that's all you have to do if you're rushing it that well. But if you're looking at the red zone there, only 66%, typically that's not enough, and two turnovers. Stanford, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what you're doing, Duke, but time of possession, of course, goes to Stanford. It gets 10 penalties. Duke playing a much cleaner game overall, but Stanford coming away with the bowl win. Let's check out who wins the national championship. It is Arizona 13-1 on the year, 38-31 over. Number three, LSU. LSU falls down to Arizona by seven. Great year from LSU, but Arizona pulling it out. Halftime, 21-14 LSU, but Arizona comes out and scores 24 points in the second half to clinch national title, first national title in a long time. Actually, they need to go look. It might be their first national title ever. I'm not sure. But Khalil Tate getting it done toward the end of the game there. LSU rip, my man. All right. KJ Costello ends the year number 33 in the country. 2,654 yards through the air. Pretty good for a Stanford quarterback. Pretty on par what you expect. Spates, almost 1,700 yards on the ground. Good for seventh best in the country. Oof, Puka Williams up there with 2K this year. Dang, my man. JJ Arcega Whiteside, good for almost 1,200 yards, and number seventh in the country. That's a balanced attack if I've ever seen one. Seven on the ground, seven in the receiver. Two Hill, 34 solo tackles, 117th, eh, not that good. Swan, 7.5 sacks. That's pretty good. I bet I bet we Stanford got some sacks. Those defensive linemen, pretty good at Stanford. Adebo, two interceptions, nowhere near the top 313th in the country. The top two with double-digit interceptions on the year. Dang. And, of course, our kicking leader, Stanford Toner. Only good from 46, 72nd best kicker in the country. Oof, that hurts. Those top guys are going for 55 and 56. But anyway, Stanford, congratulations. 9 and 4, end of the year ranked in the top 15. If you like this video, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe. I'm out. Peace.